What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg with a new Honor 8. So this is the latest smartphone from Huawei to enter the US that really aims to deliver flagship design and features at an affordable price. So this can be picked up unlocked for $399 or $449 for 32 or 64 gig capacity. Now this is also the most affordable phone with a dual camera system, which we'll explore in this video as well. But first, let's get to the unboxing. So as far as unboxings go, this is kind of unusual. The phone is slotted sideways into the box. We can go ahead and pull that out and unwrap the plastic. Of course, we're gonna take a close look at that in just a moment, but let's get to all of the other accessories that come included. Now to get to the rest of the accessories, we just pull on this tab and you'll see that the boxes are actually slotted in sideways and we'll have to push those out to get to them. So the first box here has some of our paperwork in addition to a SIM ejection tool. The second box is a bit thicker and that includes our power supply and a USB-C cable. And the great news here is that we have quick charge built into this phone, so we do get a quick charger as well. So in terms of the design, the Honor 8 doesn't really set any new trends here. This is all glass with a metal frame. It's a really good looking phone. Now if you look edge side, you can see that it's got a symmetrical design. So it's rounded toward the edges on the back and the front. And generally speaking, that's a very well-made phone that looks very sharp, especially with this sort of pearlescent color on this white model. But of course, it's available in a wide variety of other colors that you can pick from. We do get a rear facing fingerprint sensor, which is a physical button here, which can be used for a variety of functions, which we'll explore in just a bit. So the camera setup on the back of this is very similar to the Huawei P9. We have a dual camera setup and each camera has the same specs. 12 megapixels with an f2.2 aperture. One camera is used for luminance and the other is used for the color information. And these cameras basically stitch all that information together to improve overall image performance, especially low light performance. Now, unfortunately, these cameras do not have optical image stabilization, but we do get laser assisted autofocusing and a dual tone LED flash right next to it. Along the right side, we have our volume controls in addition to our sleep wake power button, which has a slight texture. On the left side, we have our combination dual nano SIM tray and micro SD card slot. This is a feature we're starting to see more in 2016. So basically the SD card slot can also double as one of the dual SIM slots. Toward the top edge, we'll find one of the microphones in addition to an IR blaster. So if you're a fan of using your phone for controlling your AV equipment, you're in luck with this phone. At the bottom edge, we'll find a USB-C connector, our loudspeaker, and our headphone jack. So when it comes to this loudspeaker, I think it is loud and clear, but it is kind of thin and hollow and does tend to distort at higher volume. So it's not the best mono speaker I've heard on a smartphone, but it's definitely passable. Along the front of the phone, you'll find these very thin bezels surrounding the 5.2 inch LCD IPS display at 1080p resolution. So although it's not the sharpest display out there, 423 pixels per inch is still a really sharp display, but I think this is a fantastic looking LCD display with bright vivid colors, clear whites, and a nice backlight that is very even. Toward the top edge of the phone, we'll find an earpiece which is very loud and clear and it does hide an LED notification light, which is an RGB light, so it flashes in different colors. We also get an eight megapixel front facing camera with a nice wide angle lens and our ambient light sensor. Now, because this is a Huawei phone, it is powered by Huawei's high silicon Kirin 950 processor. Now, this is a octa-core processor. It combines a Cortex A72 and a Cortex A53. It also uses the Mali T880 MP4 GPU. Now, the interesting thing thing about the Kirin processor is that it's based on a 16 nanometer architecture, which means it's able to outclass many of the Snapdragon processors without the sacrifice to heat and battery life. In terms of storage, we get 32 gigs standard, and of course we have micro SD to expand that further, and we have four gigs of RAM to work with. Now, because we have all this horsepower backing up the software experience, even though we're far from stock Android in this case, performance is very smooth and quick. It never misses a beat, and it definitely feels as fast as its specs suggest. Now, when it comes to the battery, we have a fairly large 3000 milliamp hour battery. That's pretty good for a 5.2 inch smartphone. And in terms of battery life, I'm seeing about five hours of on-screen time at maximum brightness. And that's definitely the sweet spot for most smartphones today. In terms of camera quality, this camera really stands out for one particular reason, and that is exposure. So it's able to really bring up the details in shadow, which tends to get lost, especially in over-processing. So you're able to see crisp details without completely blowing out the highlights, and it's able to preserve much of the color information. So generally speaking, in terms of balancing both the highlights and lowlights of a shot, this is one of the best cameras I've ever tested. Now, I wouldn't say it's a completely perfect camera. Sometimes it looks a little 
over sharpened and in some cases the color information is sort of washed out and some shots can be a bit overexposed. Now in terms of extremely low light conditions, again this camera is able to preserve a lot of detail without over processing and color noise, but it doesn't have a lot of sensitivity so images are a little dark and some of the color detail is washed out. So it's not the best camera in terms of low light performance, but it's definitely better than average. Now when it comes to video, this camera does have a few issues. One of them is the lack of 4K video recording, which is becoming pretty much standard on most modern smartphones. Unfortunately, we're stuck at 1080p at best, and part of that is this dual camera system does not have optical image stabilization, which is an essential for effective 4K video recording. It's not the best looking 1080p camera out there, but it does get the job done, and unfortunately, video is not this camera's biggest strong suit. So next up, let's use our really fast fingerprint sensor to unlock the device and take us directly to the home screen. Now, the interface is Android 6.0 with a Motion UI 4.1 on top of it. So if we go to settings, we can see that right here under about this phone, EMUI 4.1 with Android 6.0. So this is going to be very similar to the Huawei P9 I just reviewed, which is basically to say that this is very iOS-like. So we don't have an app drawer. So instead of an app drawer, all the apps have been loaded on the home screen. We can rearrange them or take them up to delete to uninstall them if we want. You can also swipe down on the home screen to get to search, tap and hold on the home screen to get to your editor, which includes all of your wallpapers. And there's a nice wallpaper selection, but not a whole lot. But we do have something called Illusion, which will basically fade the wallpaper in the background. And you can also select scrollable. So if you have scrollable selected, when you swipe across the home screen, you can see the wallpaper moves with it. We also have more settings and under more settings, we have shake. So if you want to rearrange your apps automatically, all you have to do is shake the device in fact, you'll see that little message up here that tells you that that's available. So if I just shake the device, it rearranges the apps toward the top. You can also change the layout to 5x5 five five if you want a really dense layout here. So again, this crunches the apps together. Now, if you're not a fan of notification badges on your app icons, you can turn those off for the specific ones that support it. Now, they've heavily tweaked the notification sheet. So if I swipe this down, we have these two tabs for notifications and your shortcuts. Getting to these notifications, you can see they're expandable like standard Android notifications, but you can see we have a timeline along the side and we can scroll through them. We also have delete all to close them all out if you want. Now, there is a trick to know about this notification sheet. So if I clear out my notifications, when I swipe down now, it takes me directly to shortcuts because there's nothing under notifications. Now this is a feature you can modify under settings as well. So if we go to notification panel and status bar, we have drag actions. So under drag actions, we can use smart selection. So again, that was smart selection. Basically it's telling me, I probably don't want to look at notifications because there's nothing there. But I can also determine from drag position, which I would personally prefer. So if I swipe on the right, I get to my shortcuts. Swipe on the left, I get to my notifications. Now getting to these shortcuts, this also reveals some of the many unique features that are available here. Uh, now you can edit this. So if you swipe up here, you get to this little editor. So this takes me to a list of other shortcuts that are currently inactive. So you basically are limited to a certain number, so you have to drag and drop these up top to displace them and add them if you want. Now in my case, I just want to show off some of the unique features, such as screen recording. So this will do a little screen recording, and I can select either Mini or HD by toggling between this before it starts recording. So of course I want to record in HD. So this will record the screen and the exterior microphone, so I can do whatever I want on the screen and it's recording for me. And then I can click this up top to stop it. Sometimes you have to hit it just right. Saves it to the video uh, or saves it to my camera roll. If I go to my notification here, I can go ahead and tap on it and begin to play back. We also have this floating dock feature. So if we turn this on, we now have this little button here that can be moved around from side to side and repositioned. So what does this do? Well, you tap on it and it expands out to this floating dock, which replicates some of the Android keys down here, in addition to a few other features, such as locking the device and an optimization button, which will close every background task and free up some space. And if you just want to turn this off, just tap and hold minus it out. We also have eye protection. So this is kind of like night shift on iOS. So this warms up the display to minimize the blue light, which in theory should reduce the effect that the blue light has on your circadian rhythm. So it should improve your sleep patterns. But of course, it's up to you to decide whether you want to look at this sort of yellowish screen or not. Now, unfortunately, unlike night shift, you can't schedule this. And if you tap and hold on this, you can see exactly what this does. So you have limited functionality. You can't change the intensity, but of course you can also turn it off. 
And we also have ultra battery. So this will enable a battery saver mode that dials back the screen's brightness and colors in addition to all the background tasks and apps and networking and prioritizes only essential features like the phone dialer, messaging, and your contacts. And you can exit this at any time. Now in terms of these Android navigation keys, we have Google Now on tap or just Google Now, which will take us directly to that interface. And then we have our recent apps, which is pretty heavily modified from stock. So it's not terribly recognizable here, but we can swipe up to dismiss them or bring them forward or just click close them all out with this little icon on the bottom. Now, because we have a physical button for the fingerprint sensor, this button is actually called a smart key, which can be assigned to different tasks. So in my case, if I single press, this will launch into the camera app. Now this works whether the device is locked or not. It's very nice to have, so that means I can quickly activate the camera no matter what I'm doing. You can also double press in my case to activate the LED flash and tap and hold to activate Google Now. I can also double press again to turn off that LED flash. Now this of course is assignable under settings. So if we go to the settings and go to smart assistance, this is where we can modify our smart key settings. And you can assign these actions to different apps or shortcuts. Now if you swipe down on that fingerprint sensor, you can also bring up your notification shade or swipe up to dismiss it. And if you're within the gallery app, you can swipe left or right to navigate through your images. Now while we're in smart assistance, there's plenty of other things to take a look at here, like our navigation bar. So if you want to change this up, you can go with one of these recipes, which adds a notification panel button. So if you want to include this, you can go and select it. And now if you tap that, it takes you right to your notification panel or hides it. Under motion control, we have a lot of familiar features such as flipping the phone face down to mute incoming calls or alarms. You can pick up the phone to drop the volume for those same features. And then you can also raise the phone to your ear to answer calls automatically, make phone calls if you're looking at the contact. And then you have smart speaker and a smart Bluetooth headset. So if you raise the phone to your ear, it'll switch those devices to the earpiece instead of using the loudspeaker or the Bluetooth headset. We also have tilt, which is a feature I haven't seen in a while, but basically if you turn this on and you move one of these icons, so if I tap on the hold here and move the phone left or right, this will navigate through the home screen so I can drag and drop it. We also have one-handed UI. So you can turn this on and off right up here. And basically you can activate this by swiping left if you want it on the left side, swiping right if you want it on the right side. And you can exit this mode just by tapping the blank space on either side. This also works with the keyboard, so if you want a shifting keyboard. So basically, if enable this feature and go to something like the phone dial, you can see it's either on the left hand or right hand side. Next up, we have smart screenshots. So this will explain exactly how it works, but just to show you here. So if you use a single knuckle, tap twice, and this will take a screenshot. Now, if you use two knuckles, same gesture starts recording your screen. So if you want to activate the screen recording feature, you can do that as well. We're going to go ahead and stop that. We also get a scrolling screenshot. So if you draw an S with your knuckle, this will actually start recording an entire screenshot of a website just by scrolling through the website and building out the screenshot until you tell it to stop. So if I want to say stop right there, this will record the screenshot, save it to my camera roll, and I can go ahead and scroll through it right in my camera roll instead of on the website. Under display, this is where we can turn on or turn off the blinking indicator light in the earpiece. We can also change the color temperature of the display so we can highly customize this. So we can go with the default setting, warm or cold, and you can see exactly where this point lies on that spectrum. And you can move it around to whatever custom configuration you want. Under advanced settings, this is where we'll find our battery manager. And there's a lot going on in here. So we have enable ROG power saving mode. So this will dial back the resolution of our display to 720. So we turn Turn this on. Again, this will dial back from 1080p to 720 to save battery performance. We also have these power plans and by default it has selected smart and estimates how much battery life you have. 15 hours and 18 minutes left and you can see if you go with performance which has no restrictions that's down to 14 hours and 53 minutes of estimated time. Now if you go with ultra of course you get much better battery life about 25 hours and 34 minutes based on the current estimate. Now personally I want to go with performance for testing purposes here so there's no restrictions but generally speaking from data day performance, I think smart is your best bet. So when it comes to the camera app, there is plenty going on here. So of course we can snap a photograph, tap and hold to take a burst shot, tap anywhere on the shot to manually adjust exposure or focus or just select automatic. Swiping in uh, from the left side, you get to all of our modes and there's just tons of them. We have pro photo. So with pro photo, this is where we can manually adjust everything from our ISO to our shutter speed, our EV levels, our autofocusing, our white balance and more. And of course we can hide it 
it as well. So if we want to adjust one of these, just select ISO, you get this little interface here which you can move around. We also get a pro video mode, so that's a separate mode here. Uh, so again, we can change our EV values, our metering points, autofocusing, white balance, and a few less features than you can with a still uh, camera, but of course you can see all of the available options for white balance here. So I'm just going to select auto. Uh, but when you're recording, you lose those features. So you have to set that before you start recording. Of course, we have plenty of other modes such as beauty modes for both video and photo, which basically tracks for faces and softens the details of faces to make it look a little more flattering. We have good food, which is the same trick for food selfies. So if you want to take a photograph of your food and post it, uh, there you go. That's something I've never done. Uh, we also have panorama, HDR, night shots, so long exposure shots. We have light painting. So if you want to create a light painting effect, this is a long exposure camera. Of course, you want your camera to be stabilized for that to work. We also have HDR and time lapse. We can record an audio note with a photograph. Uh, we also have slow motion and document scan, but we also have watermark. So this is kind of neat. Uh, so this will add things like the date, time, and location to your photographs like so. We can also swipe in from the right edge to get to our settings, and the ones to take a look at here include our resolution. So I've gone with 9 megapixels, which is cropped to 16 by 9 from 12 megapixels, which is a better format for showing images on widescreen YouTube. We have a few other things such as audio control, so if you want to voice command your camera, you can do so and select this. So you can go ahead and just say cheese to take a photograph, which is also handy to have. But I think the most interesting in here is ultra snapshot, so we have three options. We have open the camera and take a quick snapshot, just open the camera or just turn this feature off. So with quick snapshot, basically if the device is locked, just double press the volume key. This will quickly launch into the camera app and that's one way of getting to the camera app instead of using the quick key along the back. So in the end, I think the Honor 8 is a standout value for $399. It's got a great design, excellent build quality, and a lot of features to go with it. But this is also a very competitive segment now with phones like the OnePlus 3, uh, which would personally be my pick at $399 because it offers slightly better specs in addition to a larger display, I think a better camera system, and a better software experience because it's closer to stock Android. But the Honor 8 definitely is a great looking phone. It's a more manageable size at 5.2 inches versus 5.5. And in many ways, I think it's a better looking phone from the software design to the hardware. Alrighty guys, so that's gonna do for me in this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this look at the Honor 8. If you did, please give it a thumbs up to let me know, and I'll see you again in the next video.